G'day everyone, welcome to Party Monday. It's a great night for painting. A great night for football. Monday night's a great night for football. Alright. I'll just put my uh zoom in on my head. Excuse me everyone. Okay, let's go. Good. Just done the old hair there. Magnificent, magnificent effort tonight, Demo. One of your best. Yeah, Mum. Okay, let's go. All right, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Have a look here. They're great. Super cool. All right, well, I don't really have uh, much of a clear focus on what I want to do now with this model. So I'm just going to continue doing things. <clears throat> Young past Rocket. Yep. Hey, Rocket. Well, match fixer, it's a beautiful Monday. What's happening? Um, yeah, I'm excited for uh, excited for my model for my vampire diorama to turn up because I think that's going to be. A really cool project. <clears throat> but yeah, it's still uh, still winging its way over. Uh, we're still at chapter five, my man. Uh, Koki and I haven't been able to hit this game at the same clip as we did uh, as we did Gloomhaven, so we're still just trucking around with, yeah, um, 
chapter five. Um, but it's going really well, uh, enjoying it. Um, hopefully we're, because I'm playing two campaigns concurrently at the moment. The first campaign with Koki, we're at chapter five. The second campaign, we should be playing chapter three tomorrow. So, um, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying the game a lot. Normally, um, yeah, normally I feel sort of a little bit like, oh, I just want to skip through the story shit so we can get to the fighting. Um, I actually feel the opposite in this game. You know, I actually think the story part's the stronger element in the game. Hey, Alessandro, how are you, mate? So, um, yeah, excited to see what happens in the story and... Where we go from here. Go yeah, space toy. <laughs> yeah, it has been a little while, mate. A little while, but I've still been painting and part of the new new big project that I'm uh, that I'm working on. Which I'll probably show you actually, because you would not have seen it. Um, yeah, let me show you. Who did I show? I think I've shown DC the latest updates. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty fun little event. Good to see um, some people there. So here is the. Oh, I'll just. Can I open that up? Open image in new tab. There you go. Yeah, so this is my next big project, buddy. We've got a vampire diorama. So the last vampire cane. And uh got Sibylla up here. We're gonna have a stained glass window, some more vampires here. I'm just waiting on one model, which is a Mitriel the fallen angel. She's gonna be sitting on the ground. I'm going to carve open her chest. It's going to be sick. Uh, yeah, I was, I was there in person, yes. Um, uh, yeah. It's in, uh, it's in my home city. G'day, John Sempertigui. Sempertigui. Don't know. G'day, mate. No, no, that, that might be a little bit too much, even for me, <laughs> not the actual, not the scene itself, I think the scene's really cool, but I don't think I could incorporate that into the diorama. <laughs> <laughs> been fun though.
Uh, yeah, I might. I might add a string. Would be cool. Can I chase that feeling? Thank you, mate. It does feel like it's been a while. A four, a four. Yeah, probably, probably fishing line would be easiest, most durable. I think I've got some sitting over there that might be thin enough. So. Uh, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's a closer bust to what I like to paint, <coughs> but it's probably still not, uh, not in my alley, I don't think, not in my purchase list, maybe. Yeah, Mercenary Goblin was awesome. Mercenary Goblin was my favourite that he's done in a long time. And I think this one's also really good. <laughs> this reminds me of that, of that wonderful era of Rackham figures, you know, that's just like... Hey, Rocket. Hey. Nice glasses. Hey, bro, do you want to fill up my water bottle for me? Well, my, not my water bottle, my, my cup. Sure. Thanks. I forgot. Have you put some cucumber in it? I don't, no. I think that's a no. No, I would much prefer none of those things. Good one, mate. I think ultimately, if competitions are creating some added stress around painting, then don't do it. Ah, oh, Buxasaurus. You joining me tonight, mate? Thanks, Rocket. Where am I streaming from? Yeah, I saw, I saw some pictures. I'm excited to talk about it. What are you in there for, buddy? <laughs> All right, I think we may be on for just a little airbrushing here because I want to add a little bit more color. <clears throat> what racket models you got, Paulie? Bring them to the class so I can buy some from you, mate. <laughs> no, no, uh, I've just closed this door. I just put these doors back on, so it's the same place, just, just doors on. Uh, yeah, not mentioning any names, but someone in the household was not satisfied with the doors being off. Hi, Rocket. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, 
a lot of things Hugo could have eaten in there. So. All right, I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna do some buck wild shit right now. I think. Goblins, man, hook me up some goblins. I did not, I did not find the hand, no. I haven't tried to fix the problem yet either. I will, have to, but I'm just waiting for a Mitriel to <clears throat> arrive, and then I'll worry about the hand at that point. Hey, Jared. Okay, let's go. G'day, Captain Carp. <laughs> Wait, did you do the drawings for Rackham? You didn't, did you? Yeah, did you? Fuck, it's gonna say. Yeah, lost my fucking brain for a second there. <clears throat> All right, let's get some pink. Let's try a weird color lipstick. Yes. Oh, cool, mate. Any any damages or breakages, mate? It's a good strategy, by the way, for, for sending models if you're interested. If you're ever contemplating sending your models, I've had my best strike rate with that. I think I've only lost or I've had a couple of breakages in total. And usually it's because the, uh, the plastic container breaks rather than the model moving around. Let's try some pink. I had a couple of nuts planets. I had a couple of nuts planets too, actually. They're pretty good. I like them in general. Let's move to some crimson from the scale fantasy range because it's a slightly opaque, no, slightly transparent color. But I want something a little more substantial than 
contrast. Uh, what do I use to create mountains? Well, it depends on the scale. It depends on the area. Usually I'll build up a, a framework out of XPS foam, which is um, cheap and relatively durable. And then from there, um, it does depend on uh, the diorama and the stuff I'm using, but I've used <clears throat> backfiller, I've used putty, I've used actual rocks. Uh, G'day, Risso 1900. Thanks for the follow, champion. Um, yeah, that's about it. The, 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 the spack filler, the stuff that I used on the last diorama was really good. Um, so that's sort of what I've moved towards for a lot of my other stuff. Just takes a little while to dry is the only downside, so. G'day, Kung Fu Shrew. What's happening, mate? G'day, buddies, minis. <clears throat> yeah, no, it isn't vampires. We we are waiting for the uh, for the final piece, the Amitriel model, to arrive before we before we go ham on vampires. We will. We will indeed go ham on vampires. Don't worry. And I'm hoping uh, the, the tracking data is suggesting that it should be here in the next five days. So if we're really lucky, we'll get it by the weekend and we'll be able to spend the weekend building and finalizing everything before we move on to the painting. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying She-Hulk too, actually. It's been good so far. Let's put a little bit of green. Maybe. That might be a bit too green, don't I?
<laughs> what? What boats did you pester me with? I don't remember being pestered with boats. Uh, buddies, minis, it's actually a couple of things. Um, it's actually a Chimera, um, green is, is the majority of that. But I mixed in just a touch of black and a touch of, um, a grey just to desaturate it a little. Just wanted to bring the overall value of that area, um, down. Um, and now I'll do some really, some final highlights there, which I think will be cool. Um... Probably just want to add a little saturation. So I'm going to use some inks now. Um, and I think we'll go to yellow, maybe. Yeah, where's my yellow? Um, that's a great question, mate. I'm sure I get asked this all the time. And I'm also sure that I never remember to answer the question for this particular needle. <laughs> um... Where the fuck is my Iander yellow? Is it fucking falling down the back there? I bet you it has. You little fucker. Where are you, fuck? I need another one dropping now. There it is. It is. Um, no, it's a it's an Iwata HP uh, B+, plus, which I think is called the Eclipse. And I think it's a 0.2 needle. I think I'm like 95% sure because I get asked all the time, but yeah, check it. <laughs> well, that's not quite the color that I want. But the answer with airbrushing, mate, is very rarely is it about needle size. You know, size doesn't matter, mate. It's what you do with it. G'day, Jan. I have, yes, I have indeed seen the upcoming release. It is, it is very cool. Um, it's on, it's on my list of maybes. I'm close. I'm close. I think I could do some cool shit with it. Yes. Yeah, finally you can go on brown and not feel ashamed. Not enough volupus pink there, Deno. Just not enough, mate. Oh my my. Um, what was the last one this guy? Yeah, because I really like this. This is just Rackham. Rackham 
vibes all over. So I was always going to get this one. But um, yeah, I, I sort of struggle sometimes with um, with his pieces. And it's not because I uh, don't appreciate the sculpting. It's always incredible sculpting. But the, the question I ask myself is, is this a model that I want to paint? And if the answer is, I'm not sure, then usually I just pass. And if I decide to retract that and change my mind, inevitably I've been able to pick one up for not that much more than what they go for usually. There's only been probably two or three that I've really regretted that approach on. The rest have been fine. Oh, the Piper? Yeah. No. Nah. Get that one. Alright, I think it's time for a matte varnish. Oops. Uh, well, in the past, he used to set a, a, a number. He'd go, okay, I'm going to sell 150 of this or whatever it was. And then it was just first in best dress. So if you're in Australia, you had to go and wait till three o'clock in the morning when the thing arrived, and then you'd have to be hopeful that you'd get it. <laughs> um, but nowadays he just does he just does a pre-release window of usually 48 hours, and um, anyone that buys a copy will get it, and he just sends sells sends them out um, in batches when they're finished casting. So I think the Mercenary Goblin had 1,100 copies, which is which is awesome. Um, but yeah, there's, there's been a couple that I've missed and regretted it. So, usually worth it. That's That was his best one though. Normally sort of 600, 800 I would think. <laughs> what do you want to offer me? Because I know what one you want. Uh, usually, don't quote me because I'm not a mold making expert. Usually, what happens is you'll get one mold out of the out of the sculpt. Um, which you make a master from. And then you use the master to make, um, yeah, X amount of molds. So that's usually how it works. Usually. But I'm not a, I'm not a mold expert. I only know that because I was at, um, I was at Massive Voodoo Studio, and Raphael Pika was um, releasing. The Tinkerbell model he'd finished sculpting Tinkerbell. Sorry, Bear Crom. I was calling it Tinkerbell. Um, and they'd they'd just come out with uh with three uh casts, three molds from the master. So theoretically, yeah, uh, you you can make unlimited ones off the resin because the resin doesn't um, break or perish after the the mold. I don't think. 
so you could make unlimited copies of the resin but yeah if you don't get your original master mold right you're in a bit of froth and bubble uh yeah no but so there's separate there's different types of casting right so that's resin casting resin casting gw doesn't do that anymore uh outside of forge world and yeah so most most of the bigger companies that make plastic figures are using injection molding which is metal molds and they they're good for like a hundred thousand plus casts um Whereas the rubber molds, the silicon rubber molds, yeah, you usually get fifty casts, maybe. Again, I'm not a I'm not a molding expert. I was looking into it for a while because I was wondering about the logistics of making my own figures. That that's not entirely true. I wasn't looking at making my own figures. I was looking at getting a figure sculpted, and then I was determining how easy it would be for me to sell some copies of that figure if I was like trying to recoup some of the costs of the figure. So I wasn't like, I'm going to start a big demo range of figures. It's going to be fucking great. That was not what was happening. Yeah. And, and the difference between the rubber mold is you, you can make a rubber mold from a, um, a master for, a you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Whereas those big molds, the steel, the steel ones, they are 100,000 to make. Um, so it's it's chalk and cheese, the two industries and the two approaches. Um, and Games Workshop were able to get to that stage because of, you know, their success early on. But then you've also got, <laughs> I could make a mold of my feet. You've also got different um, you know, types of plastic molds, right? Games Workshop uses um, uh, uh, plastic, which I can't remember the name of right now. EVC, no, the other one, ABS. And those molds are really expensive, but then you can also make PVC molds, which um, don't uh, hold quite as much detail, but are less expensive to produce. So it's a really fascinating um, direction that that companies are having to decide. With you know, board games figures are obviously PVC um, because they're cheaper to produce. But that fucking color. But yeah, the old, um, the detail on the other ones is, better. G'day Chris, how are you mate? Long time no speak. Happy Monday. Well, the PVC models don't often hold anywhere near the same level of detail. With a caveat that you know a lot, a lot of PVC sculpts these days are improving dramatically because the technology is obviously improving as well. So, you know, you look at Cool Mini or not, PVC sculpts for for games like Blood Rage, um, Rising Sun, even Ank. You know that the detail on those is pretty ridiculous, and you can you can probably you probably say that at some point in the not too distant future, um, you'll be able to get pretty close to what Games Workshop figures are replicating right now. The interesting thing will be where Games Workshop is at that juncture, because they're likely to be further ahead. 
Uh, well, with Oath Sworn's an interesting case. They've got two. They've got two different models. So all of the monsters and ally figures are in PVC, uh, whereas all of the hero models are in that um, uh, the the Games Workshop plastic, which I'm, the name is escaping me. Someone will tell me at some point. It's like a polystyrene. It is party Monday, mate. Yes, yeah, so we're in the tie. We're partying hard, as always. Yeah, Ank, Ank is another level again um, over Blood Rage and Rising Sun. The, the god figures in Ank are just all time, so. Um, yeah. You know, there's there's a, a new material out there now at the moment called CO Cast, which is a type of resin that looks to be relatively inexpensive as well, um, that some companies are getting on board with. Rivenstone being the main one. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's an interesting time um, in this hobby in terms of what what we've got coming out for miniatures, which is why the display you know, side of things is is mostly still resin because that's what the scale of, you know, these, these figures manufacturers, they only need to make 100, 200 copies. They're not going to sell 10,000 copies like they would with a board game, so. But I reckon if, if we got to a point where these figures were selling massive quantities, you'd probably find that the the moulds would um, be worth investing in from a plastic perspective. Hmm. Well, I don't think any of any of this hobby is good for the environment from a environmental perspective, is it? Hey, Stevie, how are you? Happy Party Monday. Indeed. Indeed. Ah, oh, is it your birthday, little Izzy? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bella. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! One, that time has absolutely flown by. Can you believe that? Outrageous. No, nah, it's not a Versace shirt, mate. It's just a shirt. Just relax. I bought it from Big W. It was eleven dollars. Tie is a Gryffindor tie. I'm aware the tie does not match. That's part of the appeal of Party Monday. You don't have to worry about what people think of you. You can wear mismatched outfits, you can wear socks with thongs if you want. Maybe you judge you. All right, what color do we want to make this? I think we want to go with a greeny gray.
Encanto. We don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. Feels good. We liked it. Rocket liked it. Didn't you rock it? Yeah. Glowing recommendation there. <laughs> The thong is indeed different in Australia. <laughs> Stung by a wasp. Phoenix is doing his own minis. That's cool. Yeah, look, it's a... Not a world I want to get into, I don't think. But I was investigating the, the value... Because one thing I would like to do is have a specific model sculpted for myself. And as I'm sure you know, the cost of those is relatively prohibitive, getting a, just a model sculpted. So I was looking at offsetting some of that cost by selling copies of it. So. Do we put some zebra patterns on this? Zebra, zebra. Not ready to go yet. A pink and purple red zebra stripe. That might be difficult, Charlie Bear. But I'll see what I can do. We don't talk about Bruno, no. Uh, so this model's become pretty cool. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's uh, it's 
got anything happening that's really unique, but maybe that'll change. Enough mucking around with that. Let's do his eyes. Nope, not yet. Let's see how close we can zoom in. Uh, she's playing The Sims right now, and she is very excited about starting her Sims streaming career. But I don't believe she started streaming her games yet, no. Have your rocket. Yeah, the the thing that Lucas just absolutely crushes in every sculpt is is the hands and the faces. You just you can almost spot a Lucas sculpt by how well the hands are sculpted. He just he just gets them. He just gets them right. Just makes them interesting. Uh, I have painted tears before, yes. Um, yes. If your question is, have I ever painted tears well, then no. But I have painted tears. Uh, 
Uh, no, let me direct you. Natalia actually did a little thing on her Facebook page, I reckon, six months ago, um, where she showed how to paint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Droplets of water. So that would be where I would um, I would start. Something done by a much better more confident painter than I am. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. You don't have to be jealous though, mate. Because you could get it as well. If you organised it. G'day, Sleepy Slain. Uh, no, for Monty my, this year, my friend, unfortunately. No, for this year. Uh, would, would have been would have been nice. And uh, Rocket's, uh, Rocket's going overseas for a little holiday this year, but no, not, uh, not going to work for me this year. Go Costa Rica. Good on him. Talia is Orach Art. O R A C Z. You likely already do follow her, but. It's so tempting, mate. No, I am not silly enough to think that I would be able to teach classes overseas. I get by teaching classes in Australia because I'm a big fish in a small pond. Over there, I'm a tadpole.
very nice of you to say so, Alessandro, but man needs to know his limits. Hey, Penny, 19 months, what is happening? If anybody hasn't seen, uh, we um, we got together with the great people from the Dirty Paint Water Inn and had a uh, had a wonderful catch up at my house last week for Party Monday. Benny was there, Bucks was there, Bunny was there, and we just had a wonderful, wonderful chinwag about all things Queensland Model Hobby Expo, life, and uh, and everything else. So. That's of course up on my YouTube channel, worth checking out. We overview pretty much all of their amazing figures in detail. And uh, yeah, it's worth checking out if you haven't seen it, so. Yeah, Bunny, Bunny did some great stuff. Very cool indeed. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, uh, it was really good to see, and, and you do get some pretty close-up shots of their works. Um, hey, Rocket. Hey, man. <laughs> He's not a loser. We do need a rocket emote. Is rocket another doggo? Are you another doggo? Huh? No. Yeah. Rocket is my girlfriend who recently moved in and is loving every second of Party Mondays. No, that's okay. No apology necessary. You're a disembodied voice that's extremely entertaining is the uh, is the consensus rocket. Well, I certainly don't find you entertaining, but most of the time you're bagging me out, so... Most of the time you're bagging me out, so That's most
What's going on? Do you want to add some color commentary about this model? You can come and talk over here without being on camera. Why don't you tell everyone what you think of this model? Well, yesterday, yeah. I said that I liked your color scheme yeah, because it was really muted. Yeah. However, now yeah. you've added unnecessary colors to it. Wow, that's awful of me, isn't it? Yet again, all the time. Yeah. So I retract my previous comment. So you no longer like this piece because I added unnecessary color. Mm-hmm. How disappointing. Pretty basic. Well... I just try to add colour to everyone's life, mate, as you know. And it drives you insane, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're a Disney character. Thank you. Oh, well, you know, are we a Buxy? Buxy. I mean, I think. No, no. Yo, yo. Andrew. Hello. Hello. What's happening, mate? Oh, not much. You've, uh, come, you've come down from the uh, the post-QMHE vibes, have you? <laughs> um, yeah, sort of. No, you haven't. You're still high. <laughs> Hang on, I've been I've been passed with a song. Yeah. Uh from Frozen. It's been a while since we've had a song. Uh how does that one go? The wind is howling like this swirling storm inside. Couldn't keep it in. Heaven knows I've tried. Oh, shit. Good one, Rocket. Sorry, I'm just trying to take my cake in the room. Just trying to take your cake. Don't let them in, don't let them see. Be the good girl you always have to be. Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. Well, now what? they know. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. That's all I got. What taste rocket drinking? What's she on? She's on a chamomile. On a chamomile, I'm on an Earl Grey right now. Oh. Just easing into middle age life. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Rocket? She likes French Earl Grey. Yeah. Just plain Earl Grey for me. Which I would have thought Rocket was all about, being that, you know, she hates colour. She does hate colour and she hates joy in her life too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, so uh, post QMHE, come down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird, man. I, 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 this reoccurring thing keeps happening where sort of after events, you just get so incredibly fired up to paint and then the list of things you want to paint, for me anyway, grows. Um, and then I find myself sort of turtling around not knowing what to do, so... Mm. Uh, Ben set a nice little challenge for me, um, a little three-day sort of um, project. That's, yeah, like a base focus, very small. So, yeah, it was good fun. Good way to good way to hone in, I guess. Uh, I think you've got a different approach. You had this pretty much ready to go before QMHE, so smart move on your behalf. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I actually pulled this out on... Sunday morning to assemble. Yeah. Um, because I was excited for uh for painting after spending the day at um that thingy, so um yeah. When you guys came over on uh Monday it was sitting there ready to yeah. go because it was yeah, I'd sort of decided this was the project for me. But it's uh you're you enjoying it so far? It's like down a little bit, doing a little bit more to it. Yes. That's <laughs> it's looking really good. Nice of you to notice. I watched the stream yesterday. Oh, did you? Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I watched it in the afternoon when I was um when I was doing some some bits and bobs around the house. 
Had it on in the background. It's um, yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, Colwell esque. Dots and strikes. <laughs> Spotties. <laughs> It's just a, just a nice figure, mate. I always feel like when I got a Lucas to play with, I tend to tend to find another gear somehow. Yeah, well, it just demands it of you, really. I mean, mm. that's the the best thing about Lucas the sculpts is they just yeah they just keep giving. They do. They really do. Uh, which sometimes can be daunting when you're sort of halfway through and you think you're sort of rounding the bend and then you go ah. Oh, Oof, there's still plenty to go. <laughs> look at all this stuff. I've still got to paint. <laughs> yeah. And then you look and it's like a pouch. Yeah. Like it's a paint, it's a painter pouch. So it's like <laughs> so well thought out, placed really, really well. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> like that little drink canteen or he's got. That'll be fun. Mm. Uh no, it's uh it's it's a nice little nice little sculpt and nice little any any recommendations for from um from Deno or myself for a first bus? There's two ways you can go for a first bus. You can either go something like like and not not necessarily a pin, but like what we're seeing, which is arms and gear, <laughs> you know, or you can go break down all the way to an anatomical. Um What's your thoughts, Trent? You tend to tend to not really vibe anatomicals too much, right? Yeah, I'm I'm not an anatomical fan, uh, but for busts in general, uh, for for first busts, sorry, because yeah, I, I think the joy of painting busts is the joy of experiencing all of the the stuff that you'd normally paint on a bigger scale. G'day, M Fair Service. G'day, Celery. So yeah, pa painting um painting anatomical, I think you miss out on. You know some yeah. some of the fun stuff, depending on the anatomical, of course. But yeah, I get. I guess with an anatomical, the pros are that you get to solely focus on one uh, one element, which is usually skin and face. So uh, if that's something you want to do, then that could be a path to go down. But if not, um, always gonna gonna keep consistent here. Always recommend black crow stuff yeah. for um, for doing your first couple of bus slot. Uh, Cormac's a wonderful piece to do early on in the in the journey. Um, let me just pull it up. We'll see if I can pull up a few more. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of good miniature manufacturers out there um, for, for busts. And, you know, you probably, yeah. you probably see yeah, me, there is. me and Bucks painting them. But, yeah, Black Crow is always good. Um, yeah, Black Crow, Octavius um, is really good. Cormac is really good. Uh, some Harris stuff, I think. Yeah. Pretty, pretty decent. Yeah. Um, It really depends, like what's your yeah, like what's your vibe, man? What are you what are you what are you feeling? Some some fur stuff. If you prefer historically focused things, then that's the best place to sort of go. I think to to at least be able to have a good overall look at you know lots of different. I'm vibing. Places. I'm vibing in historical um projects soon. I've got to tell you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look, Jim. Um, Jim. Uh, jumped in chat yesterday. So Sydney had their uh, their painters meet up yesterday. Yeah, uh, and I think Seb was just um, being wonderful Seb as always, and just handing out some old like old miniatures that he was never going to do, and just was passing them around to people. And Jim snagged like one of those old historic, you know, one of those, those early historicals that sort of everyone did. It's one of those ones. I think it's like a, a... most of those ones are Real Garcia Latore. Yeah, I think it's a Real. Yeah. So... <laughs> yeah. To just. To just finish Bucks's point, I like to I like to paint lots of different elements. So I would go for something that's got hair, face, leather, armor, you know, different things because the the the, the joy of painting a bust is getting to paint all of those elements on a larger scale and and have fun with that larger scale. So I feel like an anatomical is not what I would steer people towards. Other people would recommend anatomical because yeah, it's sort of an easier transition, but I reckon you should yeah, go. Yeah, full it's, hand. it's kind of kind of depends, doesn't it? If you're yeah. a technical person, you might really get get into the idea of doing an anatomical. If you're if you're more just like I want to paint some really cool fantasy stuff, then you know you're more traditional routes. Yeah. You know, you're more. Um, 
I started with an anatomical and then the next thing I immediately painted was Cormac personally. So, um, yeah, so sort of both hit both and in that situation. Uh, yeah. So you're, you're feeling a historical project, like how, how historical are we talking? Well, like, we, I've, I've been sent a millimeter or bust I've, or I've been sending you, I sent you that, um, YouTube channel the other day, night shift. And, yes, and he, did. and he yeah. does like tank tank dioramas and stuff. I'm feeling that the yeah. other tank diorama. Yeah, love it, man. Um, but you know, what? I, I, I'm going to go know, I've wrong. Really just done a nice little scale modeling style project, and um, I'm with you, man. Like it's nice to change gears and and do things like with a like whether it's a time frame or a uh, a replication process or using some materials that you wouldn't normally use. I know you don't really use weathering powders too much. And that that's a bit of an element that, that is strong in historicals and tanks and things like that. So, uh, it'd be cool to see you, yeah, do that and, and use some of those things that you don't normally lean to it. So it'd be pretty awesome. I've got some pigments over there. I use them on occasion, but you're right. I, I don't use them probably enough. And yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's big in the historical, but yeah, just something about all those tanks on the weekend and, yeah. um, yeah. Uh, so I've been on like a pretty big, like fair to say Roman Laparte, like massive binge and deep dive and like, have ya? yeah, big time. Um, and I think, uh, something that Roman does a lot of that I'm really liking is cars, man. Like at the yeah. moment, like yeah. rusty cars, Ben and I have just been sort of frothing it. Um, rusty well, cars. more me frothing it, but Ben generally always froths a rusty a rusty car, particularly he, like an old rusty Dodge International, a Dodge or International, one of those. Do you know where that comes from? Cars, I'll tell, so. Yeah, so I'll tell you an interesting story. You, I think he actually wrote an article on Massive Voodoo, but he went, uh, a guy took him out into, um, I think it was Germany, like in the in the middle of the countryside somewhere. There's this giant car graveyard in the middle of a forest. It's in Sweden, I think. Sweden, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he, and he took all these photos of cars just getting basically overtaken by nature. And yeah. I, that whole, that whole experience of, of, he took heaps of photos and stuff. I reckon that's inspired him for years because he's been coming out with green moss covered shit for everything, everything yeah. since then. So it's a really inspiring subject matter, you know, like the idea that nature's reclaiming whatever it is that's put in front of it is kind of, or, or just consuming it is, yeah. is really nice. And I think it's a, a really cool avenue to pursue, especially for scale modeling and miniature painting. So, yeah. Uh, uh, space site, you have a call back on it. Oh, yeah, awesome, man. Um, you just, yeah, 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 yeah. You got, you, you did your shoulder, didn't you? So, um, yeah, Cor Cormac is a really lovely uh, miniature. It really is. It's, it's one of the few miniatures that I would probably paint twice. Yeah, um, I would paint it twice for sure. For sure. He he really hits all of those elements. About the only one he doesn't have is any armor. Yeah. Um, but he makes up for it. Same with this one. Like this, 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 you're making me want to paint this bust. But this is the the the, the natural effects of Lucas Pina and your friends painting them. <laughs> like Dave is Dave is painting Mercenary Goblin right now. You know what I mean? It's like. Yep. It's um. You just, you can't, you can't it's help but be inspired yeah. by Lucas. Yeah, I've got Papa Jumbo uh, ready to go. I've got him all, all Zenithiled and sitting there. I have him and I have Arthur from uh, Black Crow sitting there, uh, both ready to go. Uh, although I'm just not, not totally pumped for a bust at this point in time. I'm feeling just doing some more little miniature sort of dioramas and things like that. Uh, I think I've got two more in me before I um before I move back to a bus. Yeah, Athena from Black Crow is a strong possibility of our um of our Stainbeard challenge, isn't it? Are we, did, did we... Yeah, it is. It's sort of yeah, Athena. Uh, I think we tossed around Athena, uh, a lie. Um, so two two sort of heavily armored female characters, which would be really good. Uh, which I should just lean into more because they're probably forcing me to paint um, sort of female characters is, is really, really good for me. <laughs> they're not, not something I normally choose for myself. I tend to choose more. Uh, 
fantasy type stuff. Or just orcs, so. Yep. I I like I, I think I tend to hit quite a lot of subject matters, don't I? I don't really... You do, you do. Yeah, you don't I don't think you have any one I think sometimes you go through maybe when you were like younger you were going through flavors whereas now it's just sort of whatever passes over the table gets yep. painted i think which is really cool so uh, yep. and, and i guess you know the diorama focus is actually more often than not covering sort of three or four different archetypes each time you do one mm -hmm. so you're keeping you, pretty fresh on that you you get a bit you get a bit scared sometimes don't you you're just like oh, i don't know how to do this and i don't want to like what what for for females or females yeah or, or even 75 mils for a while you're just like i can't do it i can't do it it's too big me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think i think the thing with it is is that i it's not that i get scared as such i think it's just that i don't sometimes want to commit to something that's too big but yeah. that's just a matter of perspective right so it's actually not that hard to do a 75 millimeter and it, and it doesn't take that long um i think i just get yeah lost in the sauce a little bit <laughs> Yeah, you talk yourself out of it. Times. You talk yourself huh? out of it. You talk yourself yeah, out of it. Yeah, that's exactly right. I talk myself out of it. I, I actually have a um a really sweet spot for 54 millimeter. Mm. Um, as I think it's sort of that size that display painting kind of first, like when when it first started to get around, sort of hit that scale pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you know, you probably do, you know, that AK is doing rage, right? And rage yeah, yeah, got yeah. all the rights to all the old Sigma models. Yeah. Well, I think it was called Sigma, wasn't it? Sigma. Uh, I don't think it was Sigma. I think it was, uh, Enigma. 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 Yeah. Enigma. That's yeah. So do you know what happens to be there right now? That is on the way to me. What? Stat. Brom. Oh, classic. Yeah. Uh, the gnome, the barbarian gnome. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, and do they the... have that? Do they have that elf standing there holding the? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Is that but one? It's only thirty-two millimeters. Nah, I wanted it in fifty-four. You want it much bigger? Yeah. yeah. So that's a great, that's a great figure. Yeah. yeah. So I have uh, lithium oak leaf in thirty-five millimeter. Yeah. That's the one you're talking about. Yeah. I have uh, Artis, the Barbarian Gnome, in 54, and Brom Hardbark in 54. Yeah, those are classic figures. Uh, so I think I'm going back in time. <laughs> um, they're, they're models that I've wanted ever since probably seeing Seb paint them yeah. um, and a few others. Uh, they're all uh, Latorif, uh, Garcia Latorif figures, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and then I've got the um, Jerek, the Demon Hunter as well. So I'm pretty excited to sink my teeth into those. Um, I don't know why, but they kind of feel like him and Pina and like they all sort of loosely somehow don't but do fit into that Rackham vibe. So, Well, I think that when you go back to that era of sculpting and, and, and like Rackham was heavily influential in that time, yeah. um, you know, what, what we were seeing, what was coming out was was all it, it it was really influenced by each other at the time because it was still you know so small and it's 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 obviously gotten significantly larger now there's hundreds of players in the space now but yeah back then you know rackham was so unique you can't help but be influenced by what they were doing so yeah exciting man yeah so looking forward to getting onto those um and then i think it'll be a like a, a nice little bust run to push into um, CD. So it's uh, how many, how many, uh, how many weeks away is it now? Actually, Crimson question. Brush is probably like twenty odd. Hmm. So I find you, you think to yourself, "Oh, it's January; it's fucking ages away." But when you break it down into weeks, <laughs> and you realise, you know, yeah. you, most people would be would be lucky to paint one piece in a week. Mm -hmm. not everyone is um is uh as hell-bent as yourself and uh bunny ben myself yeah um on um so you want to you want to probably be doing some preparation right about now really yeah i think so i think you definitely want to be thinking about um 
you definitely want to be thinking about it. We also need to really like get ready for our diorama. I'd like to like to get that started. Oh yeah, at some point. So would I. Uh, I'm really really ready for that. Um, I think I could learn a lot from doing one of those, doing it with you even more. So, because I can't do dioramas for shit. So. <laughs> G'day, Al. Uh, well, it's just, it's a it's a very different skill, but I think you are uh, smoking the pot, mate, because your latest little piece is awesome. So. No, no, I'm stitching you up because yesterday in the stream you said I told everyone I can't do a diorama for shit. <laughs> Did you remember that? No, I, I mean I say shit about you all the time. So. <laughs> I had a good laugh. I was like, yeah. You probably can't, mate. So. Well, we don't know until you try. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's uh, until you've done it, you haven't done it, and I haven't done it. You, you, you would talk yourself out of it, mate. That's the problem. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I would. Uh, I probably it, it probably the words would never escape my mouth in the first place, you know. So, um, I might, I think I think it's sort of maybe a natural progression is once you get a bunch of seventy fives under your belt, um, maybe like anything, right? You just sort of um, yeah, you just it's a natural step to move up. Yeah. Fear no darkness. That said, there isn't really anyone doing what you do. No. There's, I mean, four, what, three to five sort of 75s on a base is about as big as it was before you started doing, well, before you did Camelot. Yeah. It's it's not nerve wracking. It's it the, the yeah. challenge the challenge is how do you stamina. finish it? Yeah, how it's do you stamina finish the is the challenge yeah. and um, finishing as strong as you started. Yeah, that's the part that um, catches people out. And attention span, yeah, is the other one as well. I was quite inspired by your uh, your orc, mate, when I saw the uh, the pirate orc and the Spanish orcs. It was yeah, it's awesome, man. Like that's it's nice to um, be returning the favor now. Um, you've been carrying the the load on that a fair bit. Well, <laughs> um, oh, you've been you've been demanded for a song. I feel good. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I knew that I would now. I feel good. I knew that I would now. So good. Bam, bam, so good. I got you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice to, to pay it back, man. <laughs> And I think like what, what I'm seeing right now, cause I'm not painting, I'm just kicking back and watching you. Uh, what I'm seeing tonight is I think that this is, is actually just already better than mercenary goblin. So your last sphere, I like this much more. Uh, and I liked mercenary goblin. Yeah. I, this is just a great model and. Yeah. But you got nice harmonies on this. Yeah. You're playing with magenta and, and sort of teals really well around your primary colors of obviously like an orange, yellow ochre. And uh, I guess we'll just say it, it, it's a white fur. You're just putting colors into it to make it interesting. Yeah. I'm contemplating turning it into zebra skin. So I want to, I want to potentially, we'll, we'll maybe discuss if this is worth doing, do a hand print. Um, you said this yesterday. Yeah. You thought about doing it. Um, if you were going to do one, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't do it on his face. You don't want to do it on his face, you don't reckon? No, I don't think so. Look at like that's where there's two faces already in that in yeah. that area. Yeah, I would be point. like, if anything, like on the body, maybe potentially. Yeah. Um, but even the body looks pretty nice. Like I don't, I don't know that you need it. You could do it on the boar. You know that. 
You do like a couple of handprints on the ball. Yeah, if you make the hand the handprints black. Yeah. It's a good call. Or even a dark, a very dark blue could work. Uh, or even a very dark burnt red would work. Hey, little buddy. Got a small Hugo sitting down at my feet. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit like frozen for Papa Jumbo. Like that was one of the next things I was going to paint. I was actually considering painting Papa Jumbo before, um, or Papa Jambo before uh, the Spartan. Uh, remember, we sort of yeah. like what, which one, which one, and you was like, nah, do Spartan. Um, which was I'm the right, on, which was the right, oh, call yeah, the, the right choice. Uh, I'm stuck on what color scheme to do for him though, because I've kind of, I, I'd like them all to be able to fit in the same world. Yeah. And like between uh, Sharky and Chicken Quest, I'm kind of like, I've used a lot of colors. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I can't, I didn't really want to do another yellow skinned one because I'd just obviously done Mercenary Goblin. So you've sort of almost um, built a rod for your own back, haven't you? Mm hmm. Very much so. I mean, I could do, I guess I could do a blue one, but um, I, I don't really want to step in on, on that, in that territory right now. Bun's doing a very cool blue orc. Um, mm. And I'm, and that's fulfilling me very much watching her do that. <laughs> so. She has. Do you, ever get, do you ever get like that where like when you see friends doing stuff, like you just get in like, a sense of fulfillment from it as well like especially if you're along the way uh yeah yeah absolutely i mean i i, I get a lot of uh fulfillment out of all of the things that, that you guys paint um yeah it's just a it's a it's a cool thing seeing everyone growing and developing and feeling like i've had a part of that but i i feel like that'd be at a lot of um a lot of painters you know because when you, when you teach yeah. a class, right, you you know, those people, you, you see them go on and, and progress and improve and you're like, fuck, I had a part of that. You obviously don't feel the same as when you produce something, but it's, yeah, it's a cool feeling. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's a sense of like, um, you're giving back, right? You're like, you're giving back to the community and then you get to see it go on and grow. You're planting seeds and watching them grow, really. Mm. But um, yeah, very specifically though, like when I, when I, sometimes when I watch you paint something or I watch Storm or Ben or Jared, like or any, any of our crew, Jim, like anyone, um, you know, if I've been around for a fair bit of the process, like I, I sometimes feel like almost a sense of completion in, in the project, if that makes sense. So like yeah. when you did the Singatorix um, and the boys, um, big deno for Singatorix and other bloke. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, I don't have any inkling now to, to paint this model. It's something I thought about painting when I saw a Banshee's one come out. And then yep. being with you that whole way through that, it was like, yeah. I need to. Stick. I don't, yeah, I don't, don't really need to. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, yeah. But I also go the other way, like seeing your Spartan made me just like froth to paint that Spartan. So mm. <laughs> I think I'm going to get one more. I think I'm going to get the one that doesn't have the fur in the... Um, in the plume that has the metal plate and that one I might try and convert into a Athenian. I feel like I really want to get a bit of a scope on blue. How, how do you teach someone to paint that's colorblind? How do you do that? Um, well, I've had a fair bit of experience with it over the years, I guess, with varying people. Most of the time they, they just want to learn by, uh, like reading really right so like they just want to make sure they read that they've got the right color tend to be more about um formulas i think than um than just grabbing paint and going if that makes sense mm. so rely on like if it's a you know charcoal black it has to say charcoal black on the bottle or more often it's red green right so yeah good luck with that jane good luck 
I, I, I think, uh, I don't think it's a hindrance at all being colorblind. I think it's, it can be really beneficial at times. It allows you to see like value um, values and it allows you to see different, um, uh, have different flares to what you do. I've seen some, some pretty awesome colorblind painters, like drop some mad stuff. So yeah, there you go. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out there and say that the mid winter mini guys tearing up the display painting scene. So. Yeah, it's interesting. I have a friend who's a um, gamer who's a colorblind, and it never really impacted us until we were playing a game one day. And uh, I was Started picking up the wrong pieces. Yeah, I was red. I was red. He was green. It was a board game, and the fuck is picking up my pieces. I'm like, can you fuck off? He's all sorry, man. I'm colorblind. I was like, really? There you go. Didn't know. Yeah, that'll be a interesting experience. You guys trying to complain and get some cake from Rocket? He's like sitting there at her feet, just gazing up at her. It's <laughs> like Meh, I want such a dude. He's just, just a little, little he's painter. a little legend. No, it wasn't Glenn Taylor. It's Simon Hall. I do know Glenn Taylor though. Smashed him in a number of games. Fucking awesome. Hey Rocket. You can see now why we pay bus. Hashtag converted. <laughs> mm. They're actually, funnily enough, they're probably the quickest of all of the projects. They're um, just fun, man, eh? Yeah. Like you just I don't have a back half the time, bro, so it's great. <laughs> <laughs> hey Rocket. Hey mate. Yeah, they're just fun. You just get to play around with textures and face. I think if I ever get the opportunity to choose a project for us for for um for our for our um, crew paints, I'm thinking I feel I really want to paint a mounted. I've been harping on about it a little bit lately, but I really want to paint a 75 millimeter mounted project. I did the broken toad Spartan. Yeah, I know that was sick. Fucking awesome figure. I like I like mounted figures in general. Probably don't probably don't paint enough of them really. Is there that many of them out there? Uh, or maybe I'm just looking in the wrong place for them. There's there's more than you'd think. There's a lot of furry mounted sort of stuff, and you know I'd really like to paint something lizard mounted. Like I like that yeah. reptile sort of vibe. I'd love to do a big dragon rider one day. You ordered a couple of the Chimera ones. Yeah, nice. The one that the Banshee did, I, I really like that one. The big chick on the dragon. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. There's something to be said about size. <laughs> I got the orc one sitting back there. I got the goblin on the wolf. There's that really yeah, cool. I've got the yeah, I've got the goblin on the wolf, but it just doesn't it doesn't appeal to me at all. I don't know why I've had that for forever, mate, and it just never even breathes a light of day. There's that really cool um uh big child guy. Um, like the orc with the jade sea type guy who was on a, yeah, it's like a weird, the, weird lizard frog thing. You know, is, the it, one? is he on the frog? Yeah. yeah, he's on the frog. Yeah. Yeah. That was a cool figure. Is it polvis miniatures? Is that what they're called? Polvis? What's Chimera's, um, other uh, company? Andrea. Andrea. Oh, and it's also Pegaso. Yeah. Pegaso. Yeah. Sorry. Pegaso, not Andrea. Andrew is the other one. Actually, they might still be the same. Don't know. I'd like to do something from them, and I'd like to do something demonic soon as well. It's been a while since any of us did any kind of like fucking hardcore demon things. Uh... Jorgen's quite a nice model too. Did you like that one? No. I think that's the one that... Um... Anytime uh, you make sweeping statements about it's been a while since any of us have done X, Y, Z, I always feel like going, well, I'm pretty sure I have. 
because you just often forget how many fucking models I'll paint. What's the last like demonic thing you did? And uh, what's her name? Is it what's is it Andromeda or whatever it is? The... Uh, well, I did I did that diorama that's got like a fucking demon orc on a tiger. That's pretty... That doesn't count, mate. That's an orc. Come on. Nah, come on, man. I'm talking to demon. I'm talking like you, you know the closest thing you've done to that is Kane. All right, Kane. Pretty Kane, recent. Which is a vampire. <laughs> Which is pretty recent, though, isn't it? It is pretty recent, but it ain't. It ain't a big old demon, like. Yeah, Jorgen is the one that um. Crack. It's been a while since I've painted. Francesco painted it. Yes, we'll bring no metal metallic. Francesco, Falabi. Great painter. You would absolutely love Francesco, by the way. Yeah? Yeah. You and him would just vibe all night, mate. You'd be loving it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, it's like, looking... Like it's, yeah. Cool. Uh, it's looking very, very likely that we're going to have a second class uh, Sydney. That's fantastic news. Venue's confirmed. Uh, before I go ahead and announce that, I'm going to email all of the uh, um, Melbourne people and let them know that the class is the following weekend. It's still... It's not on the 5th and 6th. It's on another weekend. Yeah, it's the 11th and 12th now. Oh, that's going to sting me. Is it? Maybe, yeah. My casual's birthday is that weekend. <laughs> uh... I'll offer full refunds. Might have to go searching. That's all right. Yep. We'll figure it out. It is what it is, I'm afraid. I think it's uh, Even if I can only make it to one day in the end, I'm still happy to. Do that. When you see my face, hope it gives you hell, hope it gives you hell. Oh, what a, what a weird fucking model that I've ended up with. None of this was planned. Quite, quite a dad bod, doesn't he? Yeah. Rocket's unhappy that I've gone with colour. Well, I, I'm the opposite. I'm happy that you've gone with colour. Yeah. Colour is a part of your painting identity. And when I saw it being a little bit, uh, it was a little bit washed out and a little bit more um, pastel, I was like, oh, maybe like... Ben's had a bit of a, a strong influence on... Um, no, don't on be ridiculous. And then, and then you started pumping the colour and I'm like, there we go. <laughs> There's the big fella. No. no ben, Ben's painting isn't washed out. Uh, sober was the word that you said. Sober, right. yeah. Sober's a good word for it. It's good to see his work. Yeah, it's... it's both both were, were awesome. Like, super, super happy to see it. Uh, yeah. Ben has quite a lot of control over his textures. It's really cool to say in the hand. Yeah, much um, much more impressive than I expected it to be. The, the texture that 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 alchemist was. Hopefully, he's not listening to this. That alchemist was awesome. Like the texture on that was pretty much stunning. And it's hard to do texture that well. Yeah, it is. It is. But maybe, maybe, um, why? Like, I always like to think, why? Why? Like, because it's not, it's not usually at this point with where we're at in painting. It's not like Ben's doing something 
crazy with his hand or something like that. No. I think it's just combined with the color choices that Ben's really comfortable working with. Yeah. A lot of those colors lean really well into garments. Mm. Um, and so I think once he cracked how to do texture on his cozy piece, um, he's then explored it with bunches of, like a bunch of different colors um, and found some really excellent results. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I, I don't know if we put enough credit sometimes into changing around colors and, and just color itself. Like some things look good in one color, but don't look, you could do it exactly the same way, right? And it doesn't look good in another color. So, yeah. His, um, yeah, his color choices is the thing that I think when he, when he is able to vary saturation as well as he varies texture and that's when I think he'll go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I often think about sort of what the next level looks like. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more, like uh, here is probably where I get um, the most like timid at times. It's like thinking that maybe the next level is like where like heaps of refinement exists on just refining things or taking on really challenging um, concepts, you know, like multiple light sources, the right, the like the correct way to do light sourcing. Mm. Um, you know, like when you getting that um, shadow in between where the light that your light source is coming from and then the thing that you're painting. I find that bit to be quite quite challenging. It's interesting. Um, <clears throat> and this is, this is probably just you, right? I don't think about the next level. I don't think about how do I, how do I push myself? Yeah. I just think, what can I do that's cool and different that I haven't done before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is what pushes you to the next level. Yeah, f fair. Uh, I definitely didn't, like, pick the Spartan to try and um, go to the next level, for example. Right? No. I just, I knew that I needed to start to present 75 millimeters because it probably looked like I was hiding from them. <laughs> what do you mean, probably? Uh, did. <laughs> yeah, did hide from them. Uh, yeah. Did hide from them. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I've been neglecting chat. What are people chucked in? Gonna start simple and start off with how to feel since that's a guy that's in. I can continue the conversation about mates. Your um yeah, your Spartan is probably I think the coolest thing you painted. Um and I think it's probably because you felt a little bit uncomfortable. The compressed yeah, the compressed time, time frame, frame probably helped as well. You know? It's on the Spartan it's like it's some areas on that that I really enjoy that probably people don't see straight away. It's like the under greaves, you know, mm. sorry, his leg greaves, like the coming up from the ground, the colors on that trying to, so like letting your environments influence your non-metal metallic is, for example, another like technical skill set that I want to start incorporating more. And, and that's, that's pretty challenging, but that was like my first chance to play around with that a little bit. I, I don't know. I think maybe Mercenary Goblin is the thing that's technically the best that I've painted. Correct. But maybe the, yeah. the Spartan is maybe the most interesting to look at. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm I'm all out of whack now after QMHE. <laughs> well, no, I, <laughs> I don't know what people like. <laughs> I think Mercenary Goblin is 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 better painted than the Spartan. Yeah. Um, but g'day, Dentalesh. Thanks for following. But I think the Spartan is. Um, a watershed moment for you where you where you were like this is this is how i can paint this is what i want to paint like yeah you know yeah just i don't know i guess i just really you yeah, just crushed it mate. Just, yeah 
I don't the but the Spanish stuff is just yeah, it's just so fun to look at. Yeah. And I guess I think my brain just clicks with that more than it clicks with some of the other styles that are maybe localized to areas in the world. Thanks, Robbie. Appreciate that one. Yeah, I think the uh, Spartan just finds the nice balance of stuff and interest and values and yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I was, I was quite happy with like it's a fairly rudimentary um, take on having lots of different sort of light coming in from different places, right? And having like little pings and sheens and all of that. So uh, I think there's a lot more to explore and learn in that space, but um, it was a nice first attempt. I was pretty happy, pretty happy with the shield. I was happy with the placements on the helmet. I think I could have been a lot smoother. Um, or actually maybe not smoother, just more efficient in getting from A to finished, you know? No, definitely serviceable. Yeah. Serviceable? <laughs> Functional. Functional. <laughs> Functional. Yeah. I like you like you're putting a little bit of this blue into the, the pouch here. It's really cool. A little bit of blue green. Pastel is it pastel green? Uh blue green actually. Blue green, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is cool. Uh, give it a little little contrast paint afterwards and should look pretty Bob's, Bob's yeah. your auntie yeah yeah it's nice nice to be uh excited about painting i was it was i wasn't not excited about painting but i just didn't have a project that, that i was pumped for and... Yeah, there was a there was a change, mate. Like there was a change in you. It was it was evident, <laughs> um, and awesome to see. And then I think, it, like I was, as I said, I was sort of watching your stream yesterday and uh, doing some other things. But there was it, there was a different fire burning, mate. Oh yeah, the young bucks are challenging the old bull, mate. Got to <laughs> got to find it. Got to find it somewhere deep inside. Stoke the what is it? Stoke the embers into flames. Yeah. yeah. No, it's awesome. Like that, and, and like, uh, yeah, I, I'm just really excited for our scene right now, man. I can't, can I can barely fucking hold it back to be honest. Like, <laughs> any chance anyone gives me the opportunity to talk about it, I'm I'm pretty pumped. We know. Did you um? Did you see the thing I tagged you in from Eva today? Did you see those plinths? I did, yes, I did see those. Very um, exciting. Yes, pretty cool. Pretty cool plinths. You know, I like a, a gnarly one. If you're going to take a shot at the king, you best not miss. Mm. Uh, Where's Ruben? <laughs> Ruben, Ruben Martinez, the man. Fuck, I love Ruben. He's so good. His four pieces that he did sort of over the last few years, the all of the the big child ones, you know, the the like the female warrior ones with yep. the backdrops. Yeah. Fuck, man. Each one of those is like a master study in himself. I think. He just in color. He he wields yellow like crazy, dude. Yeah. Right? Like he just doesn't miss, man. Like he yeah. just uh... Yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah. I, I heard like ev like Eva was mentioning as well, she was saying everyone's super fired up and yeah, there's a there's a vibe on the street, like you know. I think that's Natalia. I think it's mm... I think that uh, I think people are excited for Natalia very much so, but I think it's a different energy for the, the the sort of thing that I'm talking about here. I think it's people really just 
pumped to um, spend time together. I mean, this is our big opportunity, right? Like it's it, we can, we're going to get around and do QMEs and Melbourne hobby shows and all of that sort of stuff, but. Crimson is the big centralized one for us all to be. And I think there's going to be, you know, double, triple the amount of people, like even just attending for the whole duration for not even for entering their models, you know what I mean? To hang out and spend time with each other. So yeah, I think people are pumped for that. Yeah. As Jared said, that's a much easier way to say it than why rambling. Get a pun expected. Happy time zone, mate. Damon's excited for seeing the one and only Dano. Hey, <laughs> they can see me anytime they want. I'm here all the time. Stream twice a week. What, what do they the want? The godfather of pop. Pop <laughs> colour, that is. <laughs> Seeing how small he is in real life. True. I mean, when Yana, when Yana said she, stood, she was standing between you two, she was like, fuck, it's, it's not often that I stand next to two people that are towering over me in height. She's pretty tall, so. I actually forgot how tall Jared was as well. He Jared's a big boy. He's a big yeah. boy. So, um, yeah, Tui dropped by the stream yesterday as well, right? Yeah, the legend. Yeah, he was hanging out for most of the stream, actually. Just adding some adding some wisdom, Danish wisdom. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it was super cool. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what's what's driven the the enthusiasm for. Um. Crimson Brush, but this is about the time that I start to pull the trigger and or yeah, Crimson Brush, Crystal Dragon. This is about the time I start to ramp things back up. So we'll probably get on the social soon and start the ball rolling and yeah, get uh, get a bit more interest happening hopefully. And yeah, we we had a we had a light year last year because of COVID and everything that happened, but it was a good first year, a good good start. So let's hope we can. I mean, if we did 300 entries, which is like my, what? you know, that's my... Um, that's your goal, is it? That's my goal, yeah. 300 is what I'd love to say. If we if we have 300 entries, uh, I think that's a real, let's get around it, type number. Yeah. You're dreaming. Yeah, I might be. And that's aspirational and admirable. Yeah, you got to have aspirational goals. Yeah, so well done. Yeah. Yeah, realistically, maybe two hundred to two fifty. Oh look, mate, my my goal is break even. <laughs> that's, that's my goal, and break even yeah. point depends on a few factors. But um, if we hit break even, I'm pleased. And uh, yeah, break even one fifty is probably probably the target. We're gonna do able. Well, that'd be nice. That's all. G'day, well than art. We need to have a nice little gentleman's wager on this one. Uh, next Monty is the plan. Yeah. Um, not this year. It'll be, uh, it'll be 2023 for me is my goal. We'll get into Monty 2023. Maybe Bucks might make the trip. Um, yeah, we, we, we are absolutely, um, planning to do that. So that is in our plans. Um, so yeah, if you're going well, I'll have to chat with Rocket and what her plans are, but there's um there's an awesome Airbnb we stayed at last year that's perfect and it's a two better two bathrooms, so uh, that might be the go. Hey Rocket, would you stay in that in that Airbnb again with Bucks and Yana? Yeah, that, yeah, it was awesome, hey.
take you to some of the restaurants, mate, and maybe we can dip, dip off, mate. You know where we we can maybe we can slip away just across some borders, conceal ourselves in some Spanish suitcases. <laughs> well, I uh, get a get a class in, get a private class in. I'll have uh, <laughs> I'll probably go to both. SMC and uh, and Monty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For so sure. why would you? Why would you not? Right. Yeah. Like. So there'll be a little bit, a little bit of time for me to nip over and say good day to the Spaniards. Oh, hello there, friends. Oh, what are we painting? Oh, what's? <laughs> Just knock on the door. Yeah. Well, five five weeks. Is it five weeks? You can do both. Yeah, it's five weeks. Yeah. 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 So for us, like that. Yeah, having having obviously some direct family on the other side of the world helps heaps. So. I don't have direct family, but well, it's all right. a fair bit of cash, so just as good. Nice. <laughs> yeah, just as good. I hope you like the UK as well. Rocket's, Rocket's telling me that that was super cringe. Thanks, Rocket. All right. Sounds good. You know, you know you're in a, you know you're in a good headspace for painting, all right? When you look up at the at the time because you haven't once checked how long you've been streaming for, because you're yeah. just you're just painting and having a blast. Yeah, the old flow state. Yeah, it's making me want to paint it fast. I know I'm like I want to do three things, but <laughs> I want to do three sort of small scale dioramas, but. Oh, signals. Rocket really balances my personality. Well, don't tell her that, Paul. Um, yeah, she's she's not afraid to carve him up on site. Like, tell you that. <laughs> yep, she doesn't miss me. Absolutely sprays me sometimes, but that's okay. You need that. You need that. So I've been told. Uh, I'm, I'm really jazzed for painting right now and, and I really want to get cracking on my vampire diorama, but I'm not going to be able to for quite a while until a mitriel arrives. So we may have to, we may have to crank another project. Slide another one in between. Hmm. So what are we? What are we? What are uh, I'm we trying feeling? to think what you've got in your cup, cupboard right now. You've got most of your stuff. You've got in the cupboard is um is teed up for other. Yeah, all, items, all, all, all the big stuff, yeah. But I've got a few yeah. like little. Here, yeah, I'll bring up my uh, my spreadsheet on the screen. Yeah, let's let's have a look at the spreadsheet. Ready for the boys. <laughs> yeah, the boys. <laughs> Maybe we can sneak in tank. Probably not. That's uh that's I think that's for next year's QMH. Oh actually no, it'll be for next year's um Victorian. That's well before All right. Two months before or so. Natalia's decided that she wants to try and go to Perth. Oof. I'll have to uh I'll have to figure out some plans there. She wants to teach in Perth. Yeah, she wants to do a class in Perth. Talk to potentially Odyssey Gaming might want to host it. Odyssey. Uh, cool. Pete Platel. Do you remember? You met, I don't know. No, he's probably a little bit after time. I got. I got. I got a, I got a there, couple big of shop, big location. Got a couple of um. Got a couple of contacts over there. So let me. But yeah, put, put pop that in the thing for me, Will, so I can. Yeah, yeah, I'll get that for the choice. Follow that up. Get it together, Yab. You can do it, mate. Even if you just come down and enter in one model and hang out, you'll have a great time. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just not like... Uh... Yeah, pl please do, man. Like, it's... Yeah. You know, you, the value gained out of, of, of joining the community on that sort of level is is huge, I think. Um, all right. Well, fuck, she's going to be in, she's going to be here for a while. <laughs> she's so going to be here four weeks. Uh, five no. weeks. So she's, she's landing on the 12th or 13th in Brisbane. 
and then she'll fly to Perth on the 13th of the next month. So, yeah. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? What are you looking at me like that for? Little goober. All right. Yeah, that's a long, that's a long trip. I don't reckon she's got any idea what she's in for. <laughs> uh, but hey, she's young. Get in. He is young and eager and on this side of the world for the first time and making the most of it, which is everything you should do if you ever come to Australia. Cause uh, yeah, we, we are a long fucking way. <laughs> you really, you really don't have any idea how far it is until you fucking do the trip. No, out. no. Yeah, she is going to be uh, one cooked kitten by the end of it. But make it happen. For you guys, yeah. Like, I tell you what, Jared, like I was, so I did the big sort of European trip in 2019. Um, and we were, we got literally row one on the way home for the long stretch out of Dubai back to Melbourne. And I'll, I'll tell you, man, row one, having that extra leg room, a dream, absolute dream. Uh, and, and, you know, Yana and I are only sort of six foot. So for you, you fellas at six, six, seven, six, six, like Oof. having your knees wrapped around your ears in those seats just must be horrendous. I don't yeah. fly internationally unless I get an exit row, mate. Like it's just yeah. not possible. It's just yeah. not possible otherwise. Well, I've done it. It just is hell. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. For vids, yeah. Yeah. Jesus, going to Monty, can you, like, can you imagine the grind in the lead up to that? <laughs> you have to take five weeks off just before you go. <laughs> Ugh. When he flew to Australia, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, it, it, it's a hot minute. I mean, between us, between um, where Dano is and, and where I am, it's only so an hour and 50 up and maybe two hours 20 back. Um, so not not too bad, but Perth, like Perth's five hours for us. So how, how much is it for you, Trent? Five hours as well? To get worth Perth, six hours yeah, for us. six hours. So it's six, six hours it's, just to it's, get to the other side. four hours like, there and six hours back, yeah? Yeah. You were at Perth like two weeks ago. You are. So what you're telling me is that. Five hours there, four and a half on the way back, depending on getting in. Great. Trust Rocket. She was there like two weeks ago. Went your Rocket. I'll chuck some photos up as this little die are all finished up. You can drive from one in the UK in another five years. I know I've done it. <laughs> we uh we drove Yana actually drove we drove from Bolton to to Bristol and back in one day. Um that was a lot of hours in a car. Here we go. This is my this is my collection of things that I have. So we'll scratch off both the penis. They're not getting done. No. TKS Soul Hunter. Terrible kid stuff. Soul Hunter. It's a cool, cool lone wolf dude with a, with a wolf. Yeah. Oh yeah, we could do Oz. That's sort of a bigger project though, Jared. And I'm about to dive into a bigger project. So it'd be nice to just do something a little smaller. I was keen on doing Betrigard before QMHE and I was going to do that. And then in the end I decided to, uh, what did I decide to do? Don't remember. I've only got like four models on. Five, six. Their basement, that basement was sick from terrible good stuff. I would have liked to have painted that. Yeah. Right up my own. That soul hunter be good for a post apocalyptic scene. Polaris. 
You have so many dioramas lined up, mate. <laughs> hey, what about what about one of the 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 busts of the the um the the three girls that you got? Uh, I really was keen to do those as as a collective. Yeah, like you did for the elements. Uh, yeah, and and for the Gauls. Yeah. So that probably falls in the big project pile as well. Limbo Shale. Look at that. Yeah, she's nice actually. Necromancer did a version of her in blue. It was quite nice. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember her. Yeah. Ooh, that maybe we do a baden. Maybe I could do a baden. Yeah, a baden would be a nice little one to fit in there. Be interesting. <laughs> well, pun expected. <laughs> I've updated that list about seven times. It was supposed to be there a long time ago. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. I do. Uh, I have a diorama planned for um, a seventy-five millimeter diorama planned for um, crimson. Do you? Yeah, only two models though. Only two. Two's enough. Yeah. You don't need to go absolutely ham on it like some people. Some people. Yeah. Two models is enough. Yeah, I'd love. I'd love my canvas chest though. Uh, all right, so we'll have a we'll have a mull over that. But yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll get one one more in before I think. Uh, I've already spoken to Daniel. Cool. All right. I'm excited for Natalia's trip. She's going to have a crazy time. What a legend. So you'll travel down with Natalia, right? Like from um from your end to Crimson. Yeah. Is that the plan? Yeah. So she flies in she flies into Brisbane um and we'll hopefully have uh a couple of days, you know, be, yeah. So I always like international people to fly into here so they they have a sort of friendly face um of someone that they know to hang out with first get settled in in the country and get them set up with you know like a sim card and you know all, all the stuff that you need yeah, to yeah, do yeah, yeah, all this stuff. and just make it make it super easy for them and then yeah then we fly down to crimson um was what we've done in the past but as you know, my plan for this year was potentially to drive down so we can improve the streaming setup, but we'll um we'll have to think about that plan. Maybe Natalia can fly down and I can drive. I'll assess that. I'll assess that. Um uh, yeah, and then from there, because because once she's been at, at CanCon and you know all the other painters are there. All the other places that she's going to she's already met the people so it just makes the whole experience a lot easier and i'm very much liking this uh this piece mate oh yeah yeah i'm very much liking it we might need to do a swap oh. <laughs> fucking jeepers yeah he's coming along all right so far it's a lot of harmony man. it's like all interacting with each other. Is that the Sims rocket? Oh no, sorry, I'm taking a real for you go. <laughs> sorry, is it annoying? No, no, I was just like, that's very calming and relaxing music.
Good side still needs some work, but we'll figure we'll figure that out. Yeah, it just needs um just needs some help like moving across it, right? That's that that line of shadow that I'm talking about that exists yep. between the color of the creature and then the, the lighting that you're choosing. It's it's a finicky line, isn't it? Like between nailing it and then them separating and looking disjointed. Yep. For me it is anyway. I haven't quite cracked that yet. Yeah, I'll tell you, man, photo in green is a nightmare. Yeah. This little diorama, it's it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to take a photo of. I just gave up at the end. <laughs> I liked it. I liked the little diorama. We haven't talked about it too much, but yeah, I think it's really cool. Um Yeah, I put I put photos up in Dirty Paintboard. You can see it all done now. Added a few little elements since the last time you've seen it. So I put a wall in behind him. And I also gave him like a focus to look at. There's a singular rose that he's staring at. So it's nice. A little bit of storytelling. Oh, one of your great skills. Let's have a look at it, actually. Let's go and have a look in DPI. Deep, 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 deep. Finished projects. Yeah, I'm talking around. I'm liking this idea of painting things that are not necessarily threatening, you know? <laughs> like <laughs> fucking warriors and ax wielding axes and clubs and, you know, just some some soft stuff. Um, it was nice to see all the all the little details you put into the basing side of it. It was, um, yeah, really cool. I think you get a better. There's a better view. Oh. What'd you, you do, Rocket? Down? Rocket's just kicked herself somewhere. Oh no! She 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 whacked she whacked herself on it on one of my weights the other day. Oof. And she and she had a bluff about that. What did you do, to kid? Because <laughs> you can see where you're going now. Oh, yeah, so it's one of those ones that's probably less focused on being really technical and more just on being expressive. I like, I like it. I like it a lot. It's very good. It's uh, two crows. Like there's one, yeah, the one up in the tree in the nest with the eggs. Yeah, it's very you, mate. Very Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. I think that might find a home in Ben's collection. Oh, nice. As he was the. The helping hand I needed. If he wants it, if he doesn't, then all good. Oh, I think I broke my toe. You broke your toe, did you? Yeah. Yeah, that's tough, bro. That's a week off. My foot's still swollen from when I kicked the weight. Yeah, it must be tough, bro. Do you think that's I do think that's normal, yeah. She's just going off the off the head tonight, isn't she? Off tap. Fuck me. Very Fuck. interactive with the stream tonight. <laughs> right, this is this is time wasting. Don't know what you're doing here. Don't fucking go with that at the moment. Uh, all right, let's. There is no time frame, mate. Fuck around. Doodle, doodle away. 
<laughs> you make a good point. I'm looking forward to the uh, little bit of airbrush harmonising at the end of this. I think that'll that'll be really nice. Just to just some very subtle dudes. Yeah, just some little little plinks here and there. Add a little bit of colour. Just harmonise a few little things. Yeah, it'll be on this side, the side that you're working on. Yeah, this side. side yeah. yeah, yeah, but just just you know this sort of area here. Just smooth that out. And... Yeah. Yeah, should be should be nice. It's actually, um, it's a really nice. Really nice bus, this one. Yeah. I've got this one, minor, Arthur, sitting there ready to go. I think this one's the best of the three. Yeah, this one's the, the Rackham yeah. vibes just all over. The line is very cool, but I think I think this one's better than that. Yeah. Fuck duck. G'day, mate. <laughs> Tell you who, who's, who I'm really looking forward to meeting and also whose stuff I'm really looking forward to seeing. Yeah. Ray eats paint. Ray. Same I'm Monday. really liking what he's been doing. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing it in the, uh, in the hand. It'll be a crimson brush. Uh, he yeah. has been doing some gnarly stuff as well, right? Stringing up a guitar on a bus or something. Why did you see that? It was crazy. Who was that? Uh, nah. Yeah. She's always fucking crazy, man. She does wild shit. Yeah, she does. Yes, it's a real interesting take. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I actually pulled out the three orcs for our, um, for our project and had a look at them the other day. Yeah. Uh, and I'm excited for all three equally now. The one that I was least excited for, I'm now very excited for. Which one were you least excited for? Probably the, the, the real warrior one, you know. Like, I, I have the samurai, and I've got the samurai and the big cannon ogre. Yeah. And then the other one, you know, the one that's kind of like the leader, like or like a warrior leader type one. Dragon King. Um, nah, it's not Dragon King. You've got that one, don't you? Do I? Yeah, I've got the one where he's wielding the the sort of staff, two handed, sort of swinging it out. I'll tell you his name. Give me a sec. That's really gather is such a nice piece that Bill Chess did. Bill Chess just dropping bombs, eh? <laughs> out of nowhere, dude. Just I'm dropping just like, out of nowhere bombs. with that one. It was like, oh, all right, pal. Yeah. Which is the Jade C. Bus. Yeah. Bill Chess is. Absolutely on fire, but Ogledur the deserter. Ogledur, oh yeah. So the one with this huge two-handed axe. I'm looking forward to him. If you ever, if you ever want a bit of inspiration on that, um, there's a, there's a Spanish painter who did a version of it. His name's Rodrigo Chacon. I think he's Spanish. He might actually be from somewhere else. Rodrigo Chacon. He did it. He did an article on painting that I think on someone's website or something somewhere, and it is awesome. Yeah. So take, take a look at that. He's a sick model. 
man. The oh, yeah. more I look now. He's awesome. We're gonna blow we're gonna kill this project. I like the magenta, the magenta skin for the the big cannon wielding one, but I think I think I'm gonna do a, a very light skin green skin for him. Yeah, what is our color palette? I, I mean, obviously we're going for Spanish orcs, aren't we? Yeah, we're doing Spanish orcs. Yeah, great. As long as you're happy with that. Oh, of course, please, mate. I'm I'm jazzed for that. So we're doing Spanish orcs. Um. So we'll be doing lots of Spanish golds. The question is, are we going to do yellow golds or are we going to do brown golds? Because they, they've all done brown golds for these. It's been a um, long time since I've done brown gold. I'm, I'm yeah. normally yellow gold. So I'll leave that decision up to you because... We can we can do yellow gold. Like I, I'd, like to, I'd like to push my yellow gold a little bit more so we can do that. Uh, we're going to have teal as a strong hit color. So we just push teal magenta. Like it's colors we're both pretty like this with. guy, too but gentle like this guy. Yeah, I'm down for that. <laughs> yeah, I am. Down I mean, this guy's color that. scheme will actually work pretty well for for them. Uh, but I reckon we don't do yellow skin. I reckon we do some yellow skin and we do some green skin, and then maybe we pick one to have a completely different color scheme, like to fully stand out, like as a as a leader, which you've got the leader. Uh, yeah, let's let's grab me out actually. Let's whip me out and have a look right now. You can even just go to the website where you can see everything. So you all right, all, all, of all right, let's there. do it. Big child. Maybe, maybe we should have snagged up some of the scenery kits. Uh, I think Jim's got them, doesn't he? He does. He's got one of them, I think. Okay, let's go. All right. So, yeah, you've got... So, you've got Mukahash, Muksashi, Mukshashi. Yeah. Fantastic figure. Yeah. Ogle Dot, man, I can't believe you weren't pumped to do that guy. Holy shit. He is awesome. <laughs> He's awesome. I, I, I scored well on the... Uh... Yeah, and you got this guy. I got him, didn't I? You got... Uh... The wizard guy? And Dragon like King the and the Minotaur, is that right? Yes, yeah. You've you've got like Do you think we might need one more? Oh please. Yeah, you got this mad dog. Yeah. You gave me all of my prime like you gave I did. me all the, the primo choices. Very kind. I did. Yeah, so that's that's a banger. I think Ruben did that one actually. He did. So, yeah. Stunning. Uh, you also got this one. Yes. Also, so he's yeah. called a deserter, so like, maybe he needs to be isolated as well. Yep. And then you got this cannon guy, which is fucking sick. I think that was Arnie who did that one. A rover. A rover. Was it? I think a rover. I yeah. think it was a rover. Could be a rover. What a beast. What a fucking beast. Has he got fucking tattoos on his shoulder? What a legend. Oh my god. Fuck me. Yeah. Alright, very good. And then I got... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got this wizard. You do. Yeah, you've got the... the Wow wizard. <laughs> yeah, I've got him. Oh, what's his name? Do, do, Gul'dan, yeah. Yeah, Gul'dan. And then I've got the Dragon King, which would be nice. And... To be honest, I like this more than Gul'dan because his big back piece is not a part of him, you know yeah. what I mean? He's like yeah. wearing it. Whereas Gul'dan and then I got the Minotaur. I really like that. Okay. Yeah, and we substitute, like, we brought a Minotaur along. We brought a Minotaur in because you can't have a Pirates without a Minotaur. So, yeah. So we got it. We got a. Hey, Celery. What we might need to do is, I might need to do a little bit of my patented um, photoshopping where I pull all those things together and we just play with them on a. Yeah. Because it's a. You know what we could do? We could do a circle and we could have like a pirate ship on the one third of the circle, then docks in the center, and then 
like in a T, you know, like so pirate ship, uh, and then picture a T, like T shape of docks where the pirate ship is on the the top bar of the T, and then coming down the central bar of the T, you have like various, you know, you probably have uh, some of your focal points, and then you have water effects underneath it. All that could work. So I was envisioning um, rectangle base. Yeah. Because then we can use one of Jim's. True. And then I was envisaging a dock. So we're coming in like this. And then uh, like this chunk of the boat with like this point sticking out the front. Yeah. And then you've yeah, got, okay, yeah. yeah, you know, this sort of thing. And, and then maybe like a rocky shoal outcrop there or something. So, but I don't know how that works with the actual um, figures. figures. So we probably, we're probably going about it backwards there. We need to, yeah, need to think about figures first. So one of, one of the things I think is most important in, in the, the con concept of the diorama is, the figures have to be connected. I talk about it all the time. You have to have the, all those little guys like staring at each other or, you know, ha have a have a connection between the figures. Otherwise, why, why are you putting them on the same plinth or the same base? So I want to try and look at the, the figures and look at which direction they're facing. You know, sometimes you get figures that are facing this way. And so you go, cool, that's got to be on, on this side of the diorama other figures that are facing this way, great. You put them on the other side and then figures that are facing forwards, you put them in the middle. And that'll usually, you know, give you most of your problems or so, solve most of your problems. But yeah, doesn't always. Okay, let's go. start building another scenic base let's let's do it uh i'm probably gonna finish up stream shortly so i've got some fucking organizing to do <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. I think this is going pretty well so far. For sure. 
as long as you're enjoying it as well. Have you reached any point yet where you're sort of like, Fuck, I want to get it done? Has like your drive no, to no. rush kicked in at all? <laughs> like not at all. Well, that's awesome. I mean, it's just it's just Lucas, mate. <laughs> it's, it's got a spell on you. I put a spell on you. But yeah, there's there's um there's areas of it that I'm not excited about painting. So, but which are some of those? The well, the cold side right now. Yeah, the turtle shell. Tur I'll back and do the turtle shell now. It's a piece of cake. Just back and get a little bit of this going on. A little bit of this black and green going on. Back and job the two together. Back and bang turtle shell done. <laughs> All right, I might do I might do the wood on this bow and uh and then we'll call it a day i think so i want to do red wood Okay, let's go. I still haven't tried any of the new contrast paints, actually. Did you pick the ones up? No, nah, I haven't got around to it yet. Just haven't, yeah, because I, I wasn't doing sort of shit tons of painting, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll go to try them out. What color do I highlight this red with? Let's use blue so it goes into a gray. Okay, let's go. All right. Calling it a day there, Buxo. Good thing, mate. So I will be uh, back on... G'day, Augustine Maffione. I'll be back on Sunday morning for some streaming. But probably with a new project, so I think I'll be painting this guy again before then. That's my my guess. All right, he's pretty fun. You know what? You know what vibes I'm getting? Antonio oh, Penner. Yep, I can see that. A little bit of AP. A little bit of AP. Wasn't intentional, but I'll take it. Love AP. Yeah, he just painted up a nice Cairo, I think, didn't he? Recently. 
yeah, he's been doing some he's been doing some cool shit. I don't know, I think he's sort of getting back into back into the swing of things, maybe. Don't know. He's a fucking legend. Alright. That's it. That's it. Let's find someone to read. Um dreaming of a white Christmas. G'day Lucifer Roger Paints. Yab, it's a pleasure. Tarask, yeah, I do apologize. We are we are finished. We are going to find someone, but this is what I painted. Let's go raid Foolish Monk, because he is often in the chat. Is he? Yeah. He's from Canberra. Or nice. somewhere near there. Pleasure, friends. Did I tell you just lastly, did I tell you that AOS is an absolute confirmation for... Uh, oh, shit. How did I... I unrated, apparently. I didn't mean to do that. AOS is, is confirmed for CanCon. Yeah. I didn't mean to do that. All right. Let's try again, friends. <laughs> let's go raid Abe. Big Dad on Mouth. 